Hello, this is the One Episode Rule, a podcast about first impressions. I am Magpie, coming to you from the sleepy bitch dimension. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm Black All, also a sleepy bitch. Um, I watched uh, Keep Your Hands Off, I zook in with my girlfriend this weekend. And halfway through, we started watching the dub, and it's pretty good. Some of the uh, some of the line reads are not great, but some of them are incredible. Like Kanamori um, saying, "There is nothing fun about social media." Incredible, incredible line read. But but can it but can it stack up to the Japanese read of "I saw the death of a convenience store"? <laughs> <laughs> that one also the line read for that is incredible as well in English. Um. Uh, hey there, I'm gonna introduce myself now. Um, I'm also a sleepy bitch. What's up? Hi, it's Louie. Um, I didn't get any sleep last night, guys. It's real bad. Um, that's about it for me. I didn't do anything anime related. Good, good. We're all, we're all set up to pr- produce an excellent podcast today. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, do y'all want some news? Um, sure. Because sure. I've got some news. Uh, in, in, in announcement, uh, a new video game, uh, Corpse Party 2 Darkness Distortion has been announced for 2024, which I found particularly interesting given that there was already a Corpse Party 2. <laughs> I was going to say you that. Gotta be real. I spaced out halfway through you were saying that. I thought you said Darkness to bet your Raven way. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what it is. Um, uh, so I actually went and uh, took a peek at the uh, at the list of Corpse Party video games, and uh, I, I thought the answers were pretty edifying uh, because we have starting in 1996, <laughs> um, Corpse Party. Then we have Corpse Party New Chapter. Then Corpse Party Blood Covered. Then Corpse Party Blood Covered Ellipses Repeated Fear. Then Corpse Party Book of Shadows. Then Corpse Party Sweet Sachiko's Hysteric Birthday Bash. <laughs> then Incredible. Corpse Party Two. Dead That's Patient. Ah, uh, it's a Kingdom Hearts situation. <laughs> then Corpse Party Blood Drive. <laughs> and the last what? entry on this is Corpse Party Two Dead Patient New Is. <laughs> With and then. And then oh, there's gosh. the upcoming Corpse Party 2 D- Darkness Distortion, <laughs> which it is said, which it has been noted that it is uh, a completely different story from the first Corpse Party game and the PC version of Corpse Party 2. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Incredible announcement. Completely inscrutable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on. Speaking of announcements. Uh, they have the estate of Bruce Lee basically has announced the first ever Bruce Lee anime project, House of Lee. I have watched the trailer for this, it looks fucking wild, it looks extremely 90s. <laughs> I was really expecting you to just say House of Leaves. Yeah, me uh, too. Uh, it's it's very 90s, I think, because they put a bunch of filters over it to make it feel like uh, old Bruce Lee movies, mm-hmm. uh, which I think is pretty crazy. Uh, and it's being announced on like the 50th anniversary of uh, Enter the Dragon. And even better, I thought this would just be like a commemorative thing that would maybe uh, cover like uh, like a documentary aspect of like how he made movies and stuff. Uh, no, I'm going to read you guys the synopsis because House uh, House of Lee will be an action fantasy anime series that follows Bruce Lee as he assembles his dragon warriors in a race against time to prevent the world from descending into darkness and shadow. Amazing. Which, which is incredible. It's It sounds like Shaq Fu. It's... Yeah. Kind of reminds me of... Um... That almost what was that one Jackie Chan cartoon with like the Jackie different Chan, Yeah, Jackie Chan Adventures with the with yeah the amulets and shit. Yeah, <laughs> but based off of like the Chinese zodiac. Incredible, um, and uh, finally, uh, the Japanese government has announced uh, it is launching a project to collect anime cells and key animation drawings uh, because they have noticed. They have decided that they are culturally relevant and wish to stop the tide of them 
uh, leaving the country for overseas collectors. They're also uh, discussing opening an exhibit to display all of them once their their collection is established, which I think is pretty interesting. Uh, I always like cool. to hear about like archival presentation of media uh, because some industries like anime and notably video games have almost no archival <laughs> system, <laughs> uh, and old things simply disappear. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, also, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say. I also find it interesting that um, Japan's like locking down their media more for like local stays local and international goes international. They don't want local things going international as much anymore now that like international stuff is more commonplace. I mm -hmm. I've noticed it personally with buying common rider toys. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, it's interesting. Like for this sake, this case, it's cool that they're preserving it. But yeah. for common writer toys, I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Louis, you said you had something for us oh, to watch. Yes, I do. Um, how do I introduce this? Do I need a drum roll or something? Did it? Yeah. Da, 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 da. No. Okay. No drum roll. <laughs> okay. No drum roll. Um, I have. Something that I saw on a Twitch ad earlier today, and I was like, oh, hey, that looks kind of interesting. It's called ZOM 100 Bucket List of the Dead. That's as valid as the way, the way I pick any of the anime that I bring, so... Mm -hmm. Have you ever have you ever experienced the power fantasy of sumoing your boss out of a third story window? <laughs> <laughs> now I do. That scene is so visceral. Mm -hmm. He's so wet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so yeah. Um, read read this blurb. Read read this blurb for me. Fine, fine. Um... After graduating from a top university with an impressive extracurricular record in the rugby club, Akira Tendo has nailed every step of the way to securing his dream job. On top of that, a beautiful and kind co-worker always brightens his day in the office. Life seems to be going very well for Akira until he slowly realizes that sleepless nights and brutal work are his new reality. Due to three years of mind-numbing labor in an exploit exploitative company, Akira is unable to recognize the tired, unaccomplished person he has become. On track to losing all passion in life like several of his overworked colleagues, Akira finds his saving grace in the most unexpected way possible. The breakout of a zombie apocalypse. Pog. Um, <laughs> the Pog was my addition, just FYI. Poggers. 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 With the free time he finally has, Akira decides to complete a bucket list of the hundred things he wants to do before he eventually gets turned into a zombie. Although he is surrounded by the dead, Akira has never felt more alive. Hoggers, <laughs> it's the end of humanity. Hoggers. No more work. <laughs> Let's go, girls. Um, um so uh so yeah, that's that is the, the synopsis really. Uh yeah. whenever we open the up this show, we do actually open on a scene of zombie apocalypse of a man running through the streets while uh just like hordes of uh like impossible waves of zombies follow him, like uh mm -hmm. what is it, World War Z? I didn't even I didn't ever even fucking see that movie, but whatever. Uh, but uh yeah, and he's just like I can't possibly keep this up. Uh, until we cut it, we 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 move the camera back and realize this is like oh it's on TV, in a dark apartment, it's mm -hmm. full of trash bags, mm -hmm. and <laughs> the, the living corpse that is our main character. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of parallels between office work and zombiehood here. Um, mm -hmm. but um. He's just remarking to himself about it, just like, wow, that'd be great. <laughs> I wouldn't have to go to work again tomorrow. And we um, we we roll back a few uh, a few years because because um, we have to enter, we have to see him whenever he was healthy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, he he's coming into work at a work at a production company, something that he's always wanted to do. He's always wanted to be involved in television. Uh, and uh, it seems like a, and, and he's being brought in by the CEO 
uh, to meet the meet the gang, and uh, it's it seems great. It's a very relaxed atmosphere. A lot of uh, fun coworkers who seem very friendly. Um, uh, lack of like ties, so right. it's a little it's a it's a little less buttoned down than many Japanese offices. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and he's excited to start his first day at work. Uh, and uh, and uh, he even he even runs into a into a cute office lady. Mm-hmm. Uh, to to uh, who is immediately his type, and he's just like, "Wow, that's this is great. It's it's going to be great here. This is a great Pretty first lady. day." And he finishes up his work at the end of the day, and his, all of his coworkers go out to drink, you know, like like you do in Japan. And then they sit around and they ask him, you know, it's just like, oh, where'd you go to school? It's just like, oh, I went to K University. It's just like, oh, that's great. It's just like, you're pretty fit. Did you do, do you play anything? It's just like, oh, I played rugby uh, all through college. And they're like, oh, nice. And uh, uh, he, he spots uh, he spots the office lady who works in accounting across the bar. And he's just like, ah, I'll, I'll work extra hard and, and impress her. And he's like, all right, well, it's about time to get moving on, isn't it? And everyone's just like, yeah. And they all pop their, uh, they all, they all pop, all pop their la- lanyards back on, and it's like, time to go back to the office. <laughs> time to and, go back to work, everybody. Time to go back to the work mines. Uh, yeah. It's just like, what's happening? And he, he just sort of instinctively goes along with them. He's like, what, what's happening? It's just like, yeah. And it cuts the outside of the building. It's the middle of the night. It's just like an all, an all nighter on my. On my first day, huh? <laughs> and it proceeds <laughs> thusly because it yeah. is an all nighter every day <laughs> because they because they work for asshole slave drivers. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, this is an interesting bit of like work culture from Japan because this people seem to just fall into this and stay in it. When these kind of co- these kind of conditions would cause like one hundred percent turnover in the West, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and in parts of the West, say France, would lead to the executive's car burning in the, in the middle of the street. A complete breakdown of society, if you will. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, over the next uh, over the course of the next two years, he uh, he finds out that that uh, nearly every night is an all nighter. He only gets to go home like one or two nights a week. Uh, his uh, uh, all of his coworkers are completely burnt out, uh, and compare how much un, uh, unpaid overtime, which is really the straw that broke the cam- camel's back. Nobody in the West wants to work for for no money. <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> they will just quit. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, the, they work, and uh, whether or not they're pissing blood this week. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, the the final straw that broke what little humanity that's left in him is that the office lady is still nice to him and still brightens up his day and is also very obviously the CEO's mistress. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, because, yeah, they, they are fucking in the broom closet at work. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it's occurring. Uh, Events are transpiring. Uh, so so yeah every every night after work he uh he just get the world just gets grayer and grayer for Akira <laughs> to the point where he's just sort of kind he's kind of just stumbling through the streets like just barely avoiding getting hit by cars <laughs> mm-hmm. uh and uh and one night he 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 falls asleep thinking wow i hope i don't wake up so i don't have to go to work and he wakes up the next yeah. day, unfortunately, um, mm-hmm. uh, because his, his phone alarm is going off, and he's like, "Shit, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to go to work." And he gets up, and he puts on his socks, and he steps outside, and he notices there's something there's a something stuck in his letterbox, and he goes, "Ah, oh, shit! I forgot to pay for my bike space uh, this month." It's just like I wonder if the building manager is up. So, uh, so he he walks on down there and. Knocks on the shutter and is just like, "Hello, is, it, I, is anybody here? I'm gonna be late for work." <laughs> uh, and he he looks over to the side and notices that the uh, that the staff uh, door is open uh, slightly. So he just he pokes his head on and says, "Excuse me, I need to pay my bill for the bike space." And oh, you're eating someone. <laughs> <laughs> Some uh, consuming he, is occurring here. Because yeah, uh, um, 
Yeah, a man is uh, eating the uh, eating the intestines of a woman in here. Uh, a woman. A woman. A woman. Um, nobody understands that joke. <laughs> but um, fine. we can't. Not Joey make will it. get it. It's for it's for JoJo. Um, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, and this is where color starts coming back into the show, and yeah. I find it it's a very interesting use of color. I, I, I thought that was really so like cool. This. Yeah, me yeah. too. Unlike the Danganronpa use of color, which is simply a matter of censorship, because they're way past censorship. They have already shown intestines on the show. <laughs> um, so this is an artistic choice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, all of the blood is every color but red. Uh, except for his blood, which is red. Um, mm -hmm. uh, they look like they have been paintballed, <laughs> all of the zombies. Yeah, they do. Very pretty. It is. Uh, it's... It, it's extremely colorful. And uh, yeah, yeah. He's just like, oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, shit. And uh, yeah, he, st he starts ducking the zombies because there's a lot in his there's apartment so building. Uh, there's They're so many everywhere. immediately. <laughs> uh, this is not a Dawn of the Dead C1 or 2 uh, situation. Yeah. They're all uh, over everywhere. Uh, and uh, as he's sprinting along the uh, uh, the what do you call these, like, balcony? Walkways, like... like... The, the, the cat, they're like catwalks in a motel. Yeah. Um, but every, every Japanese apartment building seems to have them. Mm-hmm. Which is funny, because, like, every apartment building I've uh, walked up in has had those on the inside and had units on the outside of the pathway, but whatever. Um, uh but yeah, he's he's sprinting down it. Uh, he runs face first into an open door and just knocks it off its hinges. Um, he uh, at one point, and uh, as he's running, he he's he's slowly processing things. It's like these are zombies, right? Like for real <laughs> zombies. <laughs> for real, like friends. the like the fucking Walking Dead. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's just like, well, what does this mean? And he, he's looking out over the, the city. So, and there's just like explosions and like a fucking passenger liner is going down with one of its engines on fire. Which, mm -hmm. I don't, how does a zombie cause that? But <laughs> Yeah, the um, implications they of fell in. the zombie apocalypse started yeah, they, is very interesting. Yeah, I guess they, they get, into the thing. Yeah, I guess they just got sucked in. <laughs> but yeah. uh, Like, they just, like, did people just suddenly become zombies on the plane? Like... Yeah. Like yeah. the zombies spawn in. What else, I mean, like, what else are you gonna do? Yeah, they spawned in in a spot where none of the passengers could see. Um, but, um, <laughs> they spawned so, in the darkness. Um, he's just like, what, and he's just like, I guess this means, and you would think he would say like, oh, I guess it's the end of humanity. He's just like, I don't have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> or today, even. Yeah. Uh. What follows is uh, just an expression of like parkour joy mm -hmm. uh, as he runs from zombies laughing. <laughs> just <laughs> because he is prancing. Because he is finally free of the crushing apparatus of capitalism. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, for a while, that's, uh, that's all there is. It's very colorful, uh, very energetically animated. I quite like it. Um, mm hmm. Uh, until he finds a resting place, he he finds some spot on a roof uh, closed off by a cyclone fence to rest for a second while the zombies just bang on the fence, and he's just like, "Wow, Amazing. the sky is so blue. It's a, beautiful um, day. it's a beautiful day. I, you know, I could do anything I wanted. I could go skydiving. I was just like, actually, a lot of the things you want are not really on the table anymore. Yeah, <laughs> uh, without." considerable help <laughs> but uh yeah. it's like i could i could go skydiving or i could just day drink and watch movies <laughs> <laughs> i think He's day drink and watch movies is probably the easiest one that might be you. within his grasp yeah <laughs> i mean he could skydive but he would also have to fly the plane up into he the could, sky he could skydive once once um <laughs> you can only do it one time uh Actually, that would be fun. He's just like, what are you going to do with the zombie apocalypse? Oh, I'm going to hijack a Cessna and fly it up real high and just get out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, like, that's... The I don't thing. really care where it lands. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but he's just like, he's just like, uh, I, I could do anything. Uh, I wonder, 
I wonder if Miss Atori is just, all right because that's the girl he liked at work, and he's just like, you know what? I don't give a shit if she's she's some guy's side piece. Mm-hmm. I've got feelings for. Her. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's go check feelings. up on that. And I'm just like, ah, oh, man, good for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> steal, steal your boss's boss's mistress. Fuck it. It's the yeah. end of the world. <laughs> um. So yeah, he uh, he he. Uh, he, I don't know why I wanted to use like fucking like extraction shooter uh, terminology for this, but he rotates get back around target. to his to his apartment to get mm-hmm. some supplies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he he checks uh, his emergency contact list for uh, where Miss Atori lives, uh, and and gets scoots himself over there. Uh, and he, he pushes the button. He, oh, yeah, he, he has a minor freak out. And he's just like, oh, no, I'm getting cold feet now. <laughs> uh, no, it's an like, emergency. No, no. I have to check on her. He's just like, it's an emergency. This isn't weird. <laughs> um, and, he, and he presses a, the doorbell, which still works. Um, he's just like, Mr. Tori, you there? Hello? Um, <laughs> and he find he tries the doorknob and finds it open. He's just like, uh, ah, it's just like, hello, is anyone here? And he, he looks down and he, he sees a, a cute pair of pumps and a big old pair, a big old pair of, uh, wingtips. And he's just mm-hmm. like, hmm. I know what uh, that means. And he looks up and he sees, uh, his boss is there, uh, uh, nearly nude, uh, and huge. And like rippling as he like swells in size, <laughs> he is he is so bloated and wet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's happening here. He looks like he's going to turn into a boomer from Left for Dead. Yeah, he does. He does. It's um, a boomer, and, he, and he's just gurgling. And uh, and instead of being in any way uh, off put by this, Akira is just like is just like. Boss, I have something to tell you. <laughs> it's like the exploitative conditions at work have sapped my will to live as a human being. <laughs> Therefore, I I must, with regret, <laughs> inform you of my desire to resign from our company. And he pulls his yeah. tie off, and then he <laughs> squares up to sumo his his uh, undead boss. <laughs> and he. So good. Uh, and he goes for like a low drive because he's a uh, he's a rugby player, uh, and his boss does actually like put a foot out and stop him for a second, like yeah. like it's real sports. Uh, but he just throws him out the window, <laughs> and he he goes flying so far. Yeah, uh, and like he hits a spinning. and then he. Yeah, he, and then he hits a footbridge and you with a uh, wall, so you can't see what happens. But just like, just like a spray of liquid comes up, and all the nearby zombies go, "Oh!" Um, and he's just like, he's like, "Ah, that's done." And he looks to his left, and he sees, he sees a a, a very feminine silhouette. But uh, as it comes into focus, he sees that uh, her veins are standing out black against her skin, and she's spasming. And he's just like, oh, he's oh, no. <laughs> just like, did you know from the moment that I met you, I loved you? <laughs> and she says, and then this was the moment that we realized she was not the female lead. Um, I don't know about that, but um, do you think I do you, th- do you I, think there's a chance she's listed? She's still listed as a character above any of the other office characters. OK, okay. I mean, I'll take it. She's not at the top. But um, she might come back. <laughs> um, Interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, and he's just like he's just like farewell, my first love, and he just books it. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> just leaves her. And uh, finally, our our final scene is him sitting outside a convenience store with the lights still on. So I guess it's early on, like power still on. Um, and uh, he's having a energy drink. Uh, got to replenish from all that running. Uh, he's just like that hits the spot, and he's just like, "Well, that was a shame, but I, but you know, from now on, I can just do whatever I want. You know, I could die tomorrow, or I could die sixty years from now, and I'm not, and we we never get enough time to do everything we want. So I'm going to spend every day doing something I want to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Uh, and he uh, and he goes he he goes into the store and grabs himself a pen and paper to make a make the list. And he leaves some money. I think <laughs> it doesn't yeah. show him doing it, but there it shows a tray with a few yen yeah. uh, bills in it. I was just like, it's like you really got to leave the money. Yeah, well, he's got it. <laughs> it's not like it's worth anything. I mean, no other way. <laughs> if if he needs the money again, he knows where you have to. That's true. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the end of the show. And then they play the uh, the outro, uh, which may be the intro for the next episode. I'm not sure, uh, knowing how be. things go. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised um, if it is because this was uh, this was a cold open. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, uh, what do we think of this? I like it. Um, I like the art. Yeah, I agree. I like the art. I'm surprised that they managed to make a fresh zombie anime idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, just by giving my, just by making it hopeful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I feel like I've seen this kind of character in like zombie fiction before, where it's like the guy who's just like happy that the world's end ended, but normally yeah, but they're, they're like depicted they're, as like total freaks, like total like psychopaths. Yeah, yeah, they're they're depicted as the villains. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. But like, this is like you you feel for the guy, right? You're like, oh yeah, it is great to not have to go to work tomorrow, isn't it? Um, yeah. Like, like he 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 escaped his own personal hell. So. Yeah, um, and then also this this show is basically that I think you should leave bit where it's like for a second I thought there was monsters on the world. I thought I was gonna get eaten, and then my first thought is that I don't have to go to work tomorrow. What do they do to us? <laughs> um, yeah, actually, this does tap into an aspect uh, of like apocalypse fiction in general, not just zombie fiction that I've always. Uh, kind of liked and failed to explain a couple of different times. It's just like, so, so like, why do guys like apoc- apocalypse fiction? Why do they like Mad Max? Do they think they're going to be cool survivalists in the apocalypse? No, they're just going to become bleached skeletons. But I think it's because it's, it's because of like the fucking horrors of the modern world. People just yeah. see that, like, people just see that as a type of freedom. They're just mm-hmm. like, yeah, sure, maybe I'll fucking starve to death, but it means, but it means I don't have to go to the fucking DMV. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it means that I don't have to uh, argue with the fucking app on my refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> now let me log into Twitter. It's still Twitter on the on the refrigerator. It's still Twitter on the refrigerator. Um, That's the name of the episode. Uh, I really liked. Uh, related. Uh, I really liked the animation. I thought it was great. It was very energetic. And I mm-hmm. actually really liked this bland-ass main character because he reminds me severely of Rock from Black Lagoon. And they follow <laughs> almost similar uh, trajectories, except Rock escapes from his uh, salary salaryman life by being kidnapped by pirates. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, you guys should watch Black Lagoon. It's cool as fuck. Uh, although it's like a little... It's like... All these people are like mobsters and that kind of thing. Uh, to, to a certain degree. Um, yeah, like they're bounty hunters or something like that. Uh, the main characters are just like odd job people who uh, do various, mostly illegal things in the on the South China Sea because they have a boat. I think I have seen a few episodes <laughs> of this. Um, and yeah, they yeah, end up they end up saddled with this uh, Japanese salary man who ends up being like their negotiator. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, cool show. Yeah. Uh, would you guys watch more? Probably not. I thought it was great. It's just not for me. I don't I'd think. watch more. I might. I might watch more episodes. It depends on the vibe. But I just, uh, I just want to point out, I consistently bring solid hits. Yeah, yeah. this is a banger. Yeah, good this job. Is a good show. What was the wor- last bad one you brought? I can't remember. Uh, that. Uh, the I brought it on purpose, and it was like our next door neighbor thinks uh, like it can't be this oh, perfect or something like that. Oh yeah, the angel next door. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and it, it was more boring than it was anything else. Yeah, it was just kind of bland. <laughs> well, uh, if you'd like to tell us what you'd do during a zombie apocalypse, uh, you can do that at one episode cast at gmail dot com. That's one uh, the word, not the number. Yeah, and uh, there's also some other kind of internet website that has us on it. Um, oh, and uh, we're on there, Blue Sky. There are two. There I, is another. 
<laughs> we got we got on blue sky. <laughs> there was another another was um, created. Uh, yes, we are on Twitter and Blue Sky under the same name. Uh, come and find us if you're on one of those. If you uh, dare. Also, I just want to say, having been in a similar but not as severe situation as this protagonist, mm-hmm. I just want to say as a public service announcement, if you feel like your job is killing you, leave. You just you should, have to leave. Yeah, you don't know. You should probably go. Look at it this way. If you're killing yourself over your job and you die at your job, uh, like... They'll just replace you by the end of the week. Yeah, you know? and they'll, then they'll put up a picture of you that says "Employee of the Month." So, yeah. yeah. Um, and in fact, if, if you think that you leaving is going to uh, impact the other members of your team negatively, it is your duty to go to work and convince them to all quit at the same time. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, anyway, let's get the fuck out of here. Mm. Bye, guys.